that all, all my life. All right, huh? I was raised in the uh, United Church. Uh huh. And they didn't even say anything about being saved or anything like that. All right. But then I met my wife, Doreen. Okay. And her dad, he helped build the Baptist church at Arthur. And as I was going with her, that my dad and his dad, they all they knew each other for years because dad, he sold the international stock food to farmers and Lawrence was one of his customers. And he says, what's your dad's name? I says, Lord, oh, I've known Lawrence for years. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I was up there at his place, I would see what he was doing. I would watch him. And then in May of 1977, I was working at Harrison at the arena wiring it. My wife called and said her dad has gone to the hospital. He was, he lasted three days. And he was gone. And at the time, Preston Clark was the pastor at the Baptist Church in Arthur, just a young guy. And I was, whoa, after I went down to, to my father-in-law's place and at the time, and we got talking to Preston. And he asked Doreen, would you like to be saved? And I had no idea what he was talking about. None whatsoever. And yet, he, he said yes. So he asked me, and I said, yeah, I'll come along with my wife and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that it would change my life. All right. He did. He changed my life. I was always afraid of death and that, you know, and then that... The next night when we went to the funeral home, I see Lawrence and I says, Lawrence, I, 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 I would trade you places in a minute. I wasn't scared anymore. I wasn't scared. But after the funeral then, I started going to the Baptist church. Preston was there and he started talking in revelations about life relations and things like that. And I kept saying, that's no good. I don't believe in that. But I was back the next day, the next week. I was there. You know? And I felt I realized that yes, he was right. But one thing led to another. We, we got uh, into the Independent Assemblies of God ministry in, in Aaron. We had a great time there. We were there about six, seven years. And we had a good time, good fellowship. And that's where I started the prison ministry. I was in the prison ministry in Guelph for three days a week. I was at a Bible study, at one on one, and then on Sunday we'd go to worship. But then eventually, the pastor, he retired, and uh, so we had to look for another church. We found a church in Orangeville. We stayed there for a little bit. But then again, it wasn't, we weren't happy there. We wouldn't, we, we, when we go to church, we think we need to get something to last us a week. Not just for a few minutes, we gotta get something to last us for the whole week. You know? And that wasn't happening. So we would look around our place and we went to 12 different churches and we just couldn't find, couldn't, couldn't find anything. So then we were, Going away last, I think it was last Thanksgiving, a year ago. And we were going to go to Bob Cajun. And so I said, well, I'm going to look on the internet and see if we can find a place that maybe you know, somewhere along the line there's a church. So I looked on the internet and we found Chosen Generations Ministries. Right, man. And, I, and yet, I looked at the, they said, well, the, the, the address that's on the internet said it was at upper turn of the mall. <laughs> well, I said, well, oh, that's easy to find out where that is. <laughs> so we knocked and we came, and it said it was starting at 11.30. So we stopped at the parking lot at Upper Canada Mall. We went in there, and we walked around, and walked around, and I said, if it's the same type of church that the internet says it is, we should be able to hear them. <laughs> you know? So we looked around, and we even asked somebody if they, no, nobody knew about it. And I said, well, I guess there's got to be another address somewhere. So 
it, we weren't at home at the time, so we went on to vacation and come back. And then the next following week, and through the week, I looked for it. And they said, yeah, the, the, the uh, internet said it was 100 Eagle Street. And I said, hey, well, okay. So I put it in the, Martha, Martha's my GPS. And I put it in there. <laughs> we got down in the, in the new market. And she said, turn here, turn here, turn there. We got down to Eagle Street. And we come along and she says, your destination's on your right. And I said, it is? <laughs> That's not on our right. There's nothing there. So we turned around and we went back and I went into a, a McDonald's where there was some internet. And I looked again up on it and I said something about it. And I didn't see a Ray Twain Ray, Ray Tw uh, Tw complex. I, I didn't see anything like that. So then I put it in again and Martha took us back to the same place. But then I asked somebody, is there Ray Twain around? And yeah, it's on the other side of Young Street. Oh, okay. So we hop in the car, come over and find it. Yeah, we found it. And we drove around and around. Finally seen the sign out there, so I came in. And, and I was on the internet quite a bit talking. And uh, I almost knew Brother Carlton, because he, I seen him on the internet so much, I come walking in the door. And it's Carlton, didn't you see Who the heck am I? <laughs> But we, we came in and, and we enjoyed ourselves so much yes, sir. that we haven't stopped coming. <laughs> and the, the, thing, the thing about it is that, as you say, he said, we, as Preston brother said that we were from Arthur, that's 60 miles from here, actually. And they say, why do you go so far for church? And I said, church alive is worth the drive. <laughs> We just love it here. We just did it all. Before, you know, I, I used to get to the point where I didn't want Sundays to come because I really didn't know what to do. And, and I know the Bible says that the, the, the father is, our son at the time was home and I'm supposed to lead them to that. But we didn't have a church. I didn't, wasn't happy with where we were doing. Mm -hmm. But now, it's great. It's and if anybody ever says that when you serve in the Lord that you've got to be nuts, well, you just tell them you're screwed on the right bolt. <laughs> Thank you for everything.